Deborah with Preservation Publications and Preservation 2012 on YouTube. Today I'd like to talk to you about Colony Collapse Disorder, or CCD, which is essentially the abrupt disappearance of honeybees from a hive or a colony. Now just by way of information, I want to give you a couple of statistics. In the United States, managed bee colonies have dropped from 5 million in the 1940s to 2.5 million today and 90% of the feral beehives in this country have disappeared. This is not exclusive to the United States, however. Other countries that um, are reporting incidents of CCD are the UK, Belgium, France, the Netherlands, Greece, Italy, Portugal, Spain, Switzerland, Germany, and, and possibly Taiwan. They're suggesting that a series of environmental stressors are causing a reduced immune system in honeybees. And when that's coupled with viruses and diseases that take advantage of the suppressed immune system, that this could possibly be the cause for the reduction in hives in this country. I've never believed that climate change is the end of the world. Uh, it's something that we all have to adapt to, to survive, just like our honeybees. They will adapt eventually. In the meantime, they will suffer the consequences of temperature changes. Typically, when you find hives in the wild, they are separated by great distances. They are not typically kept in boxes and transported next to each other on trucks and moved from field to field to field. Bees are territorial. They go out and they search out sources of food, and then they come back and they do their dances in the hive to give information out to the rest of the bees where to find food. So the combination of overcrowding and, and migratory changes is a little bit like um, people having to wake up in a different town every day. You don't know where you are. You don't know where the grocery store is. You don't know where to get water. These things have to be rediscovered every single day. When managed bee colonies are moved from field to field and they only have access to one type of food, this makes for very poor diets. Just like humans, if you were to walk into a grocery store and the only thing you had to eat that day was one type of food, your health would suffer. Now to make up for this, what they do is they supplement bee diets with high fructose corn syrup. I don't need to talk to you about that. Everybody should know the effects of, that that has on our diets. If it's not good for us, it's not going to be good for bees. Now, so that you don't think that it's all bad news, there's a couple of things that I would like to tell you. First of all, bees are not indigenous to North America. They were brought over by the colonists hundreds of years ago. And that there are plants and crops that grow without the need for insect pollination. Also, there have been several incidents of bee disappearance such as in the 1880s, the 1920s, the 1960s, in 1903 in Utah specifically, and in 1995 to 96 in Pennsylvania. So this is not a new experience. It's just something that needs to be adjusted to. But in the meantime, it could reduce our food uh, production. Now there are some common self-pollinating 
crops that you can grow in your backyard. And they might include some of the following. Lettuce, peas, snap beans, soybeans, lima beans, endive, barley, wheat, oats, cowpeas, okra, eggplant, and corn. Now tomatoes are considered uh, self-pollinating too, but if insects are around, they can cross-pollinate. Now I've already suggested to you that growing any kind of grains in your backyard is not the best thing that you can do because they are low producers and they take up a lot of space. And I've also suggested to you that any foods that cannot be preserved probably are a waste of time to put in your garden as well. First, they tend to have a very sweet scent. Second, they tend to have very bright, vivid colors. And third, they tend to be structured in such a way that will give easy access to the insects and the birds. If you look at self-pollinating plants, they're pretty boring. They don't, they aren't very striking to look at. Now when you're planting your backyard garden, there's a couple of things that you should keep in mind. First, if you are planting crops that require insect pollinization, which most of our crops do, always plant a few flowers that are the brightly colored, sweet smelling uh, varieties to attract the bees. Second, Never use pesticides anywhere in your garden because while you're, you're killing the, the harmful insects, you're also poisoning the beneficial insects. If you go to my blog, I will not only give you the references for these articles so that you can look up CCD yourself and, and make up your own mind about what it does or does not mean to you in your garden. I will also post recipes for homemade pesticides, if you will, that do not harm beneficial insects. Until next time, for our families, our neighbors, our friends, and our communities, preservation.